In this video, we're going to talk about linear independence. So we say that a set of vectors is linearly independent if x1, v1 plus all the way up to xp, vp is equal to zero, has only the trivial solution. So what this means is that the homogeneous system has only the trivial solution, and if a non-trivial solution exists, then the set of vectors is linearly dependent. So what this means is that if there's a free variable, then the vectors are linearly dependent. Why is that? Because we saw before we can have a situation where 2a1 plus 3a2 plus 0a3 can equal some vector b, or in this case we can say it equals 0. Well, that means that a3 is dependent on a1 and a2. So we can have none of a3 and still get back to zero. So what exactly do we mean geometrically? Well, we want no redundant vectors. So we have vectors i and j, and i goes one to the right, j goes one up, and we have this third vector k, which is negative one, negative one. And it goes out to here. But is this set linearly independent or dependent? Well, it's dependent because we can get to this point k using just i and j. So what we can do is we can take negative i and we can take negative j, and we can get to the same spot as k. We don't need this vector k to get to any specific location that is new. So this k vector here, if we add it to our system of just i and j, it doesn't get us to any new points. So linearly independent sets, they're all required to fill this space. So in this case, if I just have i, so suppose I just have i, then I can only go to the right. So I can cover this whole line. I can go left, I can go negative i, I can go positive i, I can take any number of i, but I can only fill this x1. But let's say I add, instead of i, I add a new vector and let's call it t, and it looks like this. And we say, is this set linearly independent? Is the set i, t linearly independent? And the answer to this geometrically is yes, because this vector t gets us to new spots that we couldn't have gone before. We can now make new vectors. So we can add, say, i and t, and we can get to this position here. So we can make a new vector that is a linear combination of t and i that goes in the x2 axis. But suppose now I added this new vector and I've made it, I don't know, let's say it's down here, it points this way, we'll call this q. Well, that doesn't get us any new points because we could just take negative t and negative i and get to the same spot. So if we add in i, t, and q, then this is dependent. So it doesn't take us to any new positions. So here's the question. v1, v2, and v3, are they linearly independent? Well, we can solve for this. So what we do is we solve this set of vectors as a homogeneous system. So what we can do is we can take 0, 1, 5, 1, 2, 8, 4, negative 1, 0, and we can augment it with this 0, 0, 0, and we can solve. So let's take the first row is fine, 0, 1, 4. I'm not going to include this homogeneous column or the 0, 0, 0 column because it's not necessary. Um, but what we can do is we can take the third row and we can subtract 5 of the second row. So we'll get 0, negative 2, and 5. Then we can 
exchange some rows. So we can put one, two, negative one at the top. Then we can put 0, 1, 4, 0, negative 2, 5. Now what we'll do is we'll take the second row and we'll leave it the same. But then we'll take the third row and we'll add 2 of the second row. So we'll get 0, 0, and 13. So we can see here that these are all linearly independent because there's no free variable. We know that 13x3 is equal to 0. We know that x2 plus 4x3 is equal to 0. And we know that x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. So the only solution is if all of these are equal to 0. So we know that x3 has to equal 0, x2 has to equal 0, and x1 has to equal 0. Therefore, it's only the trivial solution, therefore the set is linearly independent. So we can actually draw these vectors and we can see that this produces a linearly independent set. So just erase these numbers right here again. You can just pause the video and go back if you want to take a look at the numbers again. But if we have a three-dimensional coordinate system, we call this x1, x2, and x3. My drawings won't be great, but we can see. So v1 is 1 in the x2 direction and 5 in the x3 direction, so it goes up like this. So this would be v1. v2 will look a little bit like this. So again, we kind of have to imagine it coming out of the page. It's a little bit harder to draw. And then v3 is going to look out here and we can kind of see if we use our imagination that yeah we can get to any spot we want this v1 pretty much goes straight up this v2 has some value in the x1 axis and this v3 has nothing in the z axis so it's completely flat on the ground but if we want to get to any point in r3 we can get there using a combination of these vectors so here's the question, when is a set of two vectors dependent? Well, a set of two vectors is dependent when the first vector v1 is equal to some multiple of v2. So for instance, we have v1 and v2. v1 is 2, 3, so it looks like here. And v2 is 6, 9. So if this is v1, then v2 is really just this vector here. And we could just take 3v1 and get v2, so they're dependent on each other, because there's more than just the trivial solution. We can say that 3v1 minus v2 is equal to 0. We can also just say that 0v1 plus 0v2 is equal to 0, therefore there's more than one solution. So they are dependent. So whenever one vector is a multiple of the other, and there's two vectors, it's dependent. If there's a set of 100 vectors, and say v1 and v76 are multiples of each other, then it is dependent, because you can use the first vector to get the 79th vector. Okay, what about w1 and w2? Let's take a look at those. Let's draw those. We have 2, 1, so one goes there, and then we have 2, 2, so one goes there. So this is w2, w1. Clearly they're not the same vector, so we can add the two together and make new points. We can add any multiple of the two together and we can get pretty much wherever we want in the space. So they are independent. So these ones right here, they're independent because they're not multiples of each other. If you only have two vectors, if none of the vectors are multiples of each other, then it is independent. Okay, so here's a theorem. We're gonna prove a theorem. If a set has more vectors than there are entries in each vector, then the set is linearly dependent. So what we're saying is, if we have p vectors, then it's linearly dependent if the number of vectors is greater than the amount of dimensions. So as an example, suppose I have three vectors, 2, 1, 1, 2, and then say 0, 4. Well, there's three vectors for two dimensions. And 
we shouldn't be able to miss points if we have two different vectors in two dimensions. Kind of like the situation where we had i, j, and that third vector. That was redundant. So we'll prove this. So here's the proof. I'm going to let a vector a be all of these, or sorry, a matrix a be all of these vectors. So v1 through vp. So what do we know here? If all of these vectors are n dimensions, so we know that a is an n by p matrix because there's n rows and there's p columns because there's p vectors so there's p columns. So what does that mean? That means that this product ax has n, what is it? It has n equations and there's going to be p unknowns. So what do I mean n equations? Well, because there's n rows, there's n different equations. So in this case up here, we would have 2x1 plus x2 is equal to zero, and we'd have x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 is equal to zero. So there's two rows, so we have two equations. So in this A here, there's n rows, so we have n equations. Okay, so now that we have that, we know that if this P here is greater than n, so if there's more columns than rows, like we have in our theorem here, then there's more variables than equations. So what does that mean? Well, in this case right here, in our example, we have three variables. We have x1, x2, and x3, but we only have two equations. So we can't solve for x1, x2, and x3 with only two equations. We need a third equation to solve for x3. So if there's more variables than equations, then clearly there is a free variable. So in this case, either x1, x2, or x3 has to be a free variable. And if there's a free variable, then that means that this ax equals zero has more than one solution. So that's the proof. If there are more vectors than there are rows, then the set's gonna be linearly dependent. So, if we have, for example, if I say, okay, I'm giving you a space called R6. We can't draw it, but here's eight vectors. Then is the set linearly independent or linearly dependent? Well, we know this is linearly dependent because there's more vectors than there are rows, or there's more columns than there are rows. So it must be linearly independent, or sorry, linearly dependent. But what happens if I say, okay, here's R6, but I give you three vectors. Can we say that it's linearly independent? And we don't know. We still have to solve to see if they are dependent or independent. What we're saying is that if there's more vectors than the, than the dimension, then it must be linearly dependent. But if there's less vectors than the dimension, we don't know. We still have to solve. So here's another theorem. This is sort of trivial. Um, if v1 through vp contains the zero vector, then the set is linearly dependent. So this should be a little bit obvious. But OK, we say, OK, let this vk equal the zero vector, where of course k is between one and p. So we're just saying some vector there is the zero vector. Then we can take zero v1 plus zero v2 all the way up to zero v k minus one. And then we can take any number of this vector v k and then zero v k plus one then we go all the way up to zero VP. 
and this equals zero. So we can take any number of this zero vector. So any number of zero vector, and then we get the zero vector back. So clearly there's more than one solution if we have zero in there. So just as a trivial example, suppose I have this vector, it's a one by one matrix, it's the zero vector in one dimension, and I say, is it dependent? Well, we can say, okay, let's take one times zero is equal to zero, and we can take 37 times the zero vector is equal to zero. Therefore, it is dependent. So that's really trivial, but that's pretty much it for linear independence. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will get to them as quick as I possibly can. Uh, if this video helped you, please share it with your friends because it might help them out too.